Preservation Board. Apparently today the Seventh Ward show is now in order. I'm going to establish a roll, set the agenda. We'll deal with the minutes of the meeting later. Um, Commissioner Richardson, are you here? Here. Commissioner Kalina, are you here? Here. Commissioner Byzantainer, are you here? Uh, no. Uh, Alderman Kennedy, are you here? Yes. Did I miss the commissioner who's present? Okay. As soon as we get to a quorum, I intend to bump the agenda to hear appeals of denials. Uh, because Alderman Kennedy has a ward meeting tonight, mm -hmm. and we will lose him at some point relatively soon. Is that okay with everyone? Sounds good. Whatever okay. you think. Then let us do that. Calling agenda item A, 51 Menard. application to construct a new building at 1851 Menard site. It will be three attached townhouses with integral garages. Very unusual site. It's right adjacent to Highway 55 and the dog park. Those of you that are familiar with the dog park in Soulard. This is the site plan. And this is the proposed uh, Menard elevation. A model example has been submitted according to the requirements of the Sular ordinance. It takes elements, the design takes elements from the model example. It is not a replica. Okay. This is the north elevation, which will be substantially visible from um, the street. Um, and that area that you see that's sided is set back further. And this is adjacent to an existing building on the north side, uh, sorry, south side. And so the brick returns the distance between the building, which is ordinarily what we require for new infill structures. That's the rear elevation, which will be seen probably from nowhere, unless maybe 55, and a rendering of the building. This is the model example. You can see that many elements have been taken from it. And just very quickly, this is a uh, site on the left. This is the property adjacent on the south. And the rest of that street. So this is the context. Two and two and a half story buildings. This is directly opposite the site. Um, note that this does have a front-facing vehicle door, or it did, prior to its uh, rehabilitation. And this is the property next to it. Two shots of it, actually. The, this is the shot on the left is the building today, but I also included an earlier Google shot, so, of which I think shows the details in a vehicle door is front-facing. So there is precedent for that on the block. And that's the little French house on the corner. Thank you. The staff is recommending that the board grant preliminary approval to the design. And I will say that the, the um, owners have worked with us to substantially revise their initial presentation. Um, and that we would like to have the, the uh, design approved on a preliminary basis subject to staff review of exterior materials and final drawings. Thank you. Commissioner, do you have any questions for the applicant? I have one for, for Jan. Jan, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh, uh, Jan, does, uh, does, do the Soulard standards let you pick and choose like that? Or do you have to follow the model example exactly? It needs to be based on a model example. It's not as restrictive as the Lafayette Square standards are. Um, but generally, the process in the last few years is to 
find an example and base your design generally on it, but allow some deviations. Okay, so this isn't the first time someone's done. No. Okay, thank you. Because that comment that's in the that you cite here, it says it it's a, a basis for comparison and as a source of ideas. That's actually in their code. Okay. Is there going to have any questions for the applicant? Alderman Coder, do you have anything to say? No. Uh, Commissioner Richardson, may I have a motion, please? I move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the proposed new construction with the stipulation that final plans and design details and exterior materials be approved by the Cultural Resources Office. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's do agenda item B, 1810 to 20, 10th, South 10th Street. Soulard Calcade going. Oh, we're going to skip California. That just came off the agenda. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. Okay, so the prelim uh, construct reattached townhouses on South 10th Street. The site plan, show me the, the uh, area of, uh, of work, the corner of Soulard and 10th, across from the dog park as it jogs to the north a little bit. So they're all in the dog park today. Uh, site plan, the property um, pretty much complies all the way around. Uh, massing, scale, administration, setbacks, it all kind of complies. So I was going to run through this with you real quick. Site plan shows you how it lines up with the uh, neighboring properties, uh, the elevation. Obviously, that faces 10th Street. This is on the north side. All brick on the uh, north side and the other side. It's also brick, even though the color's off. And the uh, it's a kind of this is an older streetscape, but it, it, the uh, cornices will come down a little bit to align with the neighboring property. Um, Soulard is in support of this. They did ask for kind of some separation between the buildings. Um, kind of a, a recessed brick portion between each facade, and the owner's going to do that, no problem, so that's, that's taken care of. I do have a letter of support from SRG that says that. I'll put that in the record. This is the rear of the property. Just some context. This is a bird's eye view showing the empty lot where it's going to be going to. There's two parcels, it's combining it to one. This is some context to the, sat to the uh, south. This is new construction that's been there for a while. And across the street, there's some historic uh, uh, fabric, uh, three-story, two-story buildings uh, heading towards the south. And this is looking north. Again, dog park to the left. <clears throat> there's a flounder just to the north of the site. And here's the, uh, the model, which complies with the uh, standard. So we're recommending approval on this one preliminarily. Um, everyone's been great. The owner's been great. Met with us, the neighborhood several times. So it's been pretty, uh, a good process with this one. Questions for staff? Um, I'm, if I'm seeing, this is the model example. Boy, the windows are sure spread out on this new design, and I don't see that step at the front door. Again, it's like it's a Soulard, so it's a basis for the design. So it's, it's just like the last one. It's but is it meeting thing. the solid void requirement? Looks like we got a lot of void, not, or a lot of solid, not as much void as I'm used to seeing in Soulard. In that front facade. Yeah, it was part of the meeting at the SRG that night. Uh, they met with the uh, neighborhood association, so it does meet the standards. And SRG supports it, right? Correct. Questions for staff? Thank you. Do we have questions for the applicant? Nope. No. Commissioner Richardson, a motion? The Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the proposed new construction with the stipulation that final plans and design details and exterior materials be approved by the Cultural Resources Office. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's do agenda item C, 2330 to 32 South 12th Street, please. There's a proposal for a roof deck and a garage port at 2330 to 32 South 12th Street in the Soulard neighborhood. This is uh, the front facade of the building, which is affectionately known in the neighborhood, my understanding, as the Soulard Hilton. Um, 
<laughs> there, an application was granted, or a permit was granted for interior and exterior alterations on this building um, back over the winter. Uh, today we are seeing a preliminary review because we have only recently gotten plans for uh, the garage port and a uh, roof deck that the developer is proposing. So here you can see uh, the site plan. The building uh, in question has the green hatch marks on it. It's at the corner of 12th Street and Lamai. The only thing about the site plan that I would note is that the topography here, uh, the Lamai Street side, as you head uh, to the um, as you head to the east, is actually going down at a relatively steep grade. This is the Lamai elevation. So there will be a roof deck. Um, which, for the most part, will not uh, be visible. Uh, uh, there is a low, you'll see the design in a moment, there is a low um, handrail that I'm certain will not be visible. There are some divider um, dividers uh, up there that I also do not think will be visible. Uh, the angle here, as you can see, is pretty steep. This is looking at the rear. Um, so the proposal, as we'll see in a moment in the plans, uh, is for a garage port, which is where sort of the porta potty is located here in that little concrete knee wall, which is scheduled for demolition. And then there will be uh, a roof deck and a trellis uh, up on the roof, as you'll see in a moment. This is looking to the east down Lama. I think you can get a sense of that gray change that I mentioned a moment or two ago. Um, the garage port again would be on the right. There's an alley building there, as you can see, that faces onto Lamai. So here are um, elevations of the site. So the, um, <laughs> I guess I'll look at this one for these purposes. The rear elevation drawing that you see shows um, a stair tower and elevator tower, which will be located almost exactly in the middle uh, of the roof deck. Uh, additionally, to the left is um, on the 12 feet elevation side, you see a, a, uh, uh, a separator wall between two parts of the roof deck. And then on the rear, you kind of can't tell from this angle, but um, at the very back of the building will be a trellis. Um, and uh, that is almost exactly in line with the roof deck. The developer did two sight line studies. So this is the 12th Street sight line study. You can see the person over on the kind of the right hand side and the visual angle that shows that for you know, an average person um, looking up, you uh, should not be able to see that, um, that uh, the elevator tower and stair tower. Uh, then on the left hand side, you see the trellis that I mentioned earlier that's on the back wall. Here you see a section and a plan of the proposed roof deck. So uh, you can see uh, the, I, we don't have our. It should be on your left, on your left. It is not on that left. So <coughs> at any rate, um, there's a handrail there that is below the height of the parapet wall. I'm confident the handrail will not be visible. Um, the stair tower, oh, thank you. The stair tower here has been reduced in height. Well, I'll do this too. Right here has been reduced in height slightly from the original proposal. Um, in plan, you can see the trellis is only in this section here um, or here. Um, this is the original submission. You can see in the original submission, the trellis went all the way across the back. Um, this rear facade is a semi-public facade, and the ordinance does not allow um, roof decks at semi-public facades, which the rear would be, or public facades, which uh, would be along here. Um, and you'll see that in the write-up from the staff. But as per staff concerns and neighborhood concerns, the, the roof trellis was reduced in, in, uh, in the width across the back and also in its scale. Uh, as was the stair tower and uh, elevator tower slightly. There is no, really no rear yard for this property. So that's one piece of this proposal is the roof deck. The other piece of the proposal is the garage port. So here you can see the garage port. Um, 
the Soulard standards are very interesting when it comes to garages. Uh, it says a garage must be based on a model example, um, which is not present here. However, the developer has done a lot to sort of mirror what a model example would look like. So you see the requisite trim boards on the back and on the side. You see um, they're using hardy plank siding here as well. This is the lamb eye elevation. So looking at the facade of the garage port that will face the back wall of the building, so lamb eye is along here along here. They've put siding on a third of it and because of the angle for the most part this will read as a garage not as a garage port. I'm not going to sit here and say there aren't places where you will definitely be able to tell if you stand at exactly the right place and look in you'll be able to see that it's a garage port that this part is actually open and is not an enclosed garage. You can see from the plan down below that it has six parking spaces. This is the alley view. Again, um, it's a garage port. On the other hand, the developer has proposed a, an appropriate sort of appropriately styled door uh, design. I'd like to talk about context and then we'll go into the verbiage in the ordinance. So this is across 12th Street. Or rather, I'm sorry, this is on the same side of the street. Here we see the actual building under construction and then the facades of the buildings going south from there. This is the view across 12th Street, so this is the corner of Lam I and 12th here, and then the buildings going south from there. So that's the corner of Lam I and 12th, and then the buildings going south that way. This is across Lam I from the alley, so you have an alley. The alley is kind of here, it's kind of hidden by this truck. You can't really see it too well, but you see the brick structures at the corner there. And then this picture is of the building across Lamai at the uh, northeast corner of Lamai and 12th. That's under um, rehabilitation now. So those conclude the slides. I have letters, um, a letter of support from Alderman Coder. And I have some letters of opposition from surrounding neighbors. The, I think there are two things I want to emphasize in the rest of my remarks here, which I said in the, in the proposal, uh, in the description of the proposal, which is strictly read by the ordinance. This doesn't comply. The garage port is not based on a model example. The roof deck is placed at public and semi-public facades. Um, you could argue that on the semi-public facade, there will be a dominant um, trellis design, although that's been reduced. So I think in the abstract, you know, and that's why the recommendation is not support. We're just, I'm just saying what's in the ordinance. I'll also say I don't think the changes to this from the deviating from the ordinance are going to be that visually um, substantial. For the most part, for the average observer who walks down the street near this building, that's going to look like a garage, not a carport. Uh, the roof deck, they've done sight line studies and made a significant effort to make that not visible. And I think the developer is trying to make up for the fact that they don't have any rear yard space. Uh, the developer is also committed to working with staff if this were to be approved so that it could be um, during the construction so we could work with them to make sure that the various components of the roof are not visible from the streets. Um, at, certainly not from 12th and from Lam I. Um, obviously, you've got that semi-public facade on the back, and that trellis is going to be visible. So the staff uh, is acknowledging that the proposal uh, is not in accordance with the ordinance, but feels additionally that the, um, that the design is not um, going to have a terribly negative effect on the surrounding on the surrounding area or on the development site itself. Okay. Questions on this end? Questions. No, sir. Yes. So I, I guess the carport's the one that confused me. Maybe I missed this. So uh -huh. it, it doesn't comply because it's not based on a model example? Correct. And are there historic model examples of carports? In there Subart? are not. So. It says garages and carports are not regularly accepted, and then it says it has to be based on a model example, but yet there aren't any model examples of carports. 
Right, and that's acknowledged in the staff write-up that you can't do a carport, strictly speaking, um, should not is not something that the ordinance allows. The preservation board could allow it, but the ordinance doesn't allow it. So is that just bad drafting? Why wouldn't they just say carports are not allowed? Well, they also, uh, I would say it's bad. I don't know, I, don't, I can't speak to the original intent of the writers of the ordinance. What I would say is that I wish the garage section of this ordinance were, were either edited, rewritten, better written. It allows vinyl siding, for example. And I don't know if you'll find a model example with vinyl either. So. And, and then you said the stair tower was reduced in height. Was that at your request or working with the neighborhood or? I'm not sure. It wasn't reduced by much, but it was reduced just enough so that in the original um, sightline study, a very tiny amount of it would be was shown as being visible from the 12th Street side. And then with the second version of the sightline study, it wasn't. So it was reduced ever so slightly, but just enough to get under that sightline study view. Okay. And then you said, so have you, you've already seen this building before because they've already been working on it, correct? To some degree, sure. And so is this like a change that wasn't part of the original plans or is this just, they're just kind of doing it piecemeal? I, I can't, I think that's a better question for the developer as to why they didn't include this in their original application. Do you feel more strongly about one of these elements than the other? I feel like the developer has made a strong effort to assure that the roof deck will not be, uh, will not visually detract. And the fact is that during construction, we can go and walk and meet with the construction crew, construction manager, and uh, sort of do some evaluation as the thing gets built. The garage port, you know, um, I guess the garage port is is more problematic. I think you can see from the neighborhood residents' statements who live nearby, they're more concerned about the garage port. I don't mean to speak for them, but that was the sense I got from reading and from phone conversations. As I said, I don't think, I think this will read as a garage. Um, for, you know, you know, if someone comes there and decides to walk around Soulard and look for any blemishes on, um, on design that's been approved, and you really want to see that this is a carport and not a garage, you can find that. But the average person who walks around Soulard or drives around Soulard, you know, it's, it's, it's got enough components on the street and alley sides that look like a garage that I think it will be experienced as a garage, even though it's a garage port. Yep. Well, sorry, sorry, one more. So you said it, uh, the, the roof stuff's not going to visually detract. And the standards, like, it shall not visually be dominant from any street. So is, you're saying the same thing as the standard, aren't you? Right. Right, I think when they reduced the trellis, I think the trellis was visually dominant, but they went from having that go all the way across to just one trellis in the center of the, of the semi-public facade. Got it. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear from the applicant, please. Hello. Hi, I'm Ron Seabaugh, a member of Renovations Unlimited LLC. And your address? 424 South 11th Street. Okay, if, you, if you've brought other people with you, you can arrange your presentation any way you want. Jack here supporting me and the developer Hank, but anyway. Uh, don't have a lot to say. Uh, with regard to the planning stage, we did the, we pushed through the exterior first. We were trying to get the exterior of the building done as quickly as we could. Uh, at the same time, we had an application pending with the uh, SHPO and DED, because it is a tax credit project. Um, all that has been approved with SHPO and DED, the plans as you've seen them. So there was a process where we went with the initial permit application, which was just the exterior and some of the framing. And then we started with the, the interior. Um, it, it was actually a, a mistake on our part. We thought that the deck and the, and the garage port were included with that application and found that they were not. Uh, we had some feedback indirectly from the architect and um, cultural resources regarding uh, the garage port and rooftop deck and, and uh, became aware that that was going to be an issue. So we started this dialogue, which led us to this preliminary review now. And the, the deck has been kind of a work in process 
the architect had drafted some of their thoughts and ideas. Uh, the developer, Hank Hart, and myself have worked to scale that down because when they did those sight line studies, we're like, well, that sticks out too far. We lowered the elevator tower. Uh, the hoist beam will have it above. After the elevator's installed, we'll drop that hoist beam down, and then that allowed us to lower that roof on that, uh, we call it the doghouse, for the elevator ever so slightly. But it was enough that, according to the architect, it gets it out of the sight line from if you're standing on the side of a lam uh, The I called it a pergola, the trellis, whatever's appropriate. We skinnied that back purposely. We actually did not intend to have it that big. And we had cut the deck size down. Um, they originally had the bulk of the roof covered in it. We've covered it or brought it down to just half of the building. So um, the separations, we're dividing it into four sections. We've constructed those with an angle on the front so that those would not be visible. So those are the steps that we've taken. With regard to the garage port, um, I, I, there was one neighbor who has requested that if we're doing hardy board, he would at least request that we do a parapet style roof on the uh, front facade. And w that's something that we have agreed to do that, were, that was not included in our discussions with cultural resources or SRG at the meeting that we had this past Tuesday. So we said that's not a big deal. We'll take it up, so it square it off so it looks like a parapet wall and not a slanted roof. Um, the objections from the, uh, that we heard from the neighbors was not regarding the roof at all. In fact, they had no opposition to it, but it was because of the garage port that they wanted a brick facade on it. And um, it's just something that, I mean, there are enough in Soulard with vinyl siding and or hardy board uh, that we opted to go with the hardy board. Uh, it, we're running it all the way down. It will be no more than six inches up off the ground. And again, we're doing the, the return on the side of, of basically one third of the building so that as you come down Lamai and you look to it, it will look like a, a full garage. But it's fairly tight. When the people come into that facility, we wanted to keep that front open so they don't feel totally enclosed and they'll feel like a tunnel as you walk between the building and the garage port because that's going to be pretty tight in there. So we're working on a fairly small footprint. So do you have any questions for me? Commissioner Richardson? So the deck and the elevator dog tower thing, whatever you called it, that the SHPO and DED have approved all those? Yeah, we have an approved tax credit package already with everything as we've shown it with you. Is it a federal tax credit deal too? <coughs> no. So it's it's for it's, sale? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, we're doing seven condos. Um, we had bought it from a developer who had proposed a number of apartment units with virtually no parking, not nearly enough. I uh, had a lot of resentment protests from the neighbors. We purchased the building, changed that design. We're doing what we deem as seven fairly high-end condos, and they're all, they will all be for sale units. Okay. Hey, Colleen. Um, high-end condo units. So would the price point allow brick, or is brick just no, cost prohibitive? We did not get the NPA tax credits on this, uh, so it is going to be an extremely thin deal. Our elevator ran, well, we were estimating one number that came in at $58,000 more. The masonry has came over, uh, come in well over budget. We're $100,000 over our budget already and failed to get NPA tax credits. <coughs> in retrospect, should have walked away from it, done seven single family houses, which has been our core business. So, no, I mean, the budget's really thin right now. So, we, I mean, we're looking at every place we can to trim budgets. But the ordinance actually allows Hardy Board, right? For the. Well, I mean, Technically, I mean, we have a support from SRG, and SRG indicated that it's fairly incongruous. I think that was a word that even cultural resources used. There's some examples of vinyl sided uh, garages and stuff in Soulard. So, and we used a hardy board siding down on our 10th Street project, which is right along 10th Street. So, Alderman Kennedy? No questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Alderman Cotto, do you want to speak now or last? I'll speak now, if that's all right. Thank you. 
Chairman Callow, members of the Preservation Board. I'm Jack Coder. Um, I'm the Seventh Ward Alderman. I'm also a Soulard resident. I reside at 2404 South 11th Street, not far from uh, this proposed project, and just down the street from uh, from Mr. Ron Sebaugh, who just spoke. I will uh, point out for the record that Ron uh, renovated a single-family home that he resides in at the corner of 11th and what's that? 11th and uh, 11th and Victor that has not only a uh, carport, it also has a rooftop deck on the carport uh, visible from the street, and it's quite nice. Uh, I have no doubt that whatever they uh, develop here at the at the Soulard Hilton will uh, will be a great benefit to the neighborhood. Is, is your offer to put the carport on the roof? Maybe we could do well, that. Would be interesting. He'd need a, an even bigger, more expensive elevator for that, probably. Um, the little history of this property, uh, as Ron mentioned, they're they're planning on turning this into seven um, market rate condominiums, um, which would be a great benefit to the neighborhood. I mean, you, when I talk to to Soulard residents who are looking either for a first home or looking to downsize out of their one of their big, you know, relatively large Soulard homes with lots of steps, this is the type of product they're looking for, something that with you know, less square footage, elevator access, um, obviously the building doesn't currently have an elevator. Um, this, this property is called the Soulard Hilton or the 12th Street Hilton um, because it for, I believe since probably the 30s, maybe before then, was a uh, single room occupancy, 20 plus unit, weekly rental, basically hotel. Um, it was really, really in bad shape. Uh, and the the owners of that facility finally about two years ago sold it to another developer who had planned some apartments. Uh, that didn't go over very well with the neighbors. Uh, and Ron and Hank were gracious enough to purchase the property and step in with this development. Their previous project in Soulard, um, which was uh, met with great fanfare, they saved basically two brick walls uh, on the corner of what's that, 10th and Allen. Uh, built some townhomes at 10th and Allen. I know that project was here before, one for first for demolition. It was owned by Pete Rothschild. He wanted to demo it years ago. That was denied. Um, these guys were able to save it and, and build two beautiful townhomes. Um, I think the finished product here will be um, a wonderful asset. So I want to speak first to the rooftop deck, although it doesn't sound like there's a lot of controversy over the rooftop deck and the whatever the structure for the um, elevator is. Uh, you know. I appreciate them doing the sight line study and working with one uh, cultural resources and the plan review team and the neighbors um, to make sure they had no problems with this. Ron and Hank personally walked around and knocked on doors and uh, you know, solicited input from the neighbors uh, about this proposal. Um, so I, I do hope that you guys will uh, approve the, uh, the rooftop deck uh, and elevator uh, structure. Speaking to the carport, and uh, Mr. Richardson, I'd agree this probably needs some cleaning up. Section 303 of the of the uh, Soulard Historic Code regarding um, garages and carports. Uh, clearly, there is no model historic model example of a carport. Even if there was a historic carport, I doubt we'd find a six-car carport uh, anywhere in the neighborhood. So, you know, if you if you take off that requirement, uh, I would say that the, the proposed carport meets the rest of the of the of the requirements of this uh, ordinance. And really, in, down in Soulard, you know, historically, they approve, you know, wh whether it's a garage or a carport, the, the, neighbors, the, the neighborhood, especially the plan review team, is pretty, is very interested in people building these structures, getting their cars off the street. It helps with safety, um, and it also obviously helps with property values. And we just, frankly, the neighborhood has no interest, at least the plan review team who, in my, you know, I rely on to help interpret the, uh, the historic code in the neighborhood. They aren't really interested in requiring all brick facades on, on garage structures as other uh, surrounding neighborhoods do. They're okay with, um, with allowing hardy board or vinyl. Um, full disclosure, I, my, my home has a uh, garage built by the previous owner with vinyl siding that is visible from the street. So, um, and I would be willing to wager that the previous owners of my residents would not have built that garage if they had been required to, to put brick all the way around. Um, it sounds like in the past there's probably been some um, different interpretations regarding the carports and garages in the neighborhood, um, and I'm, I'm happy to work with the neighborhood to make sure we can clean up this section uh, and make it more consistent uh, so we're getting a similar result you know, every time someone applies for a a, a permit to build a carport or a garage. So I think Ron spoke briefly to the sort of financial hardship they would face if forced to, um, you know, build a full 
blown six car garage on this property. Um, I, I, I've seen the pro formas. I'm working with the developers currently to try to uh, also work with the city on some incentive packages for this property. This project's going to be very tight. Um, this project's, I think, going to be a great addition to the neighborhood. I mean, if you go by the building currently and see what they've done to the facade, they've stripped back decades of old paint and brought back, brought back the original masonry. Um, this is going to be a great improvement uh, and, and bring seven, you know, seven for sale uh, units to the neighborhood. So I would hope that, you know, we can get past the, the garage carport issue, approve it, and let these guys continue on their work as long as they're working hand in hand with cultural resources and the neighborhood, because I'm sure other issues are going to come up along the way. It's a complicated project. Um, Chairman, do you have a copy of the Soulard Neighborhood Association's, uh, the plant, the Restoration Committee's support letter? I didn't hear that included in the record. Not passed by here. Okay, I'm going to, can I approach? Please, please give it to Adana. bring a printed copy. Um, so with that, you know, obviously this project has my full support. It also does have the support of the Soulard Restoration Group and their plan review team who have worked uh, very closely with Ron and Hank on this project. So I would hope you would um, grant preliminary approval uh, and uh, I guess overturn the recommended denial of the, pre of the uh, Cultural Resources Office. Thank you and I'm happy to answer any questions. Alderman Kennedy? Oh. No, Mr. Richardson? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Katsikas. I didn't see it. I, no, I haven't seen that yet. Look, look in that big package there. See if it's in there. Hello. Please go ahead. Uh, my name is Steve Katsinas, and I am a homeowner. I live directly across the street from this project, and um, I am here to um, pre uh, present an alternative viewpoint on just a few points um, is, that the other is folks that you have standing right there, there looking up at the roof? Um, it actually could be. If you look back at the, um, the photos, my home is in one of the... Um, uh, photos there, and I have actually lived in Soulard for 24 years in two adjacent properties uh, that are both across the street from the Hilton, and there were a number of us who um, kind of charmingly named that place the Hilton, or we also used to call it the Helmsley, after Leona's place, uh, based on what it was that they were doing there. Um, so we are absolutely um, delighted um, that the developers are, have pursued this project. Um, I was one of the neighborhood leaders, I guess I could say, um, who were part of the, as someone said earlier, the resentment protest with the previous developer who had proposed 14 one-bedroom apartments in the building and we didn't feel that that was an appropriate use for the property. So these guys have come in and we are in full support of the overall project. Um, on a daily basis, I see the changes and the improvements that are being made um, to the facade and all of the really hard work that's going on there. And I think from a marketability perspective, um, everything that they are doing um, is going to create a really superior product to add to the overall architectural inventory of the neighborhood and the um, property values that are there for um, homeowners in particular. So I've, I've done this for a while. I yeah. think there's a but coming. Yes, there is a big but. So we are totally in support. Um, we, and I'm going to speak for myself, but I know I'm representing the point of view of a number of neighbors that are adjacent to the property. And uh, the rooftop deck is of no concern to any of us. I myself have a rooftop deck. I'm going to look straight across at those people that are sitting up on their rooftop deck. And um, there are the minimum um, visibility rules around that are kind of shaky as far as I'm concerned in Tular anyway, so that's not a problem. It really comes down to the, the design and the, um, the, vin the design and the finish of the garage port. Now, I totally understand that this idea of garage port didn't exist back when the buildings were created, and so to provide a model example is probably a little bit of a stretch at this point, but I think there are uh, items of good design um, that are, um, that are uh, missing here, and this is where I'm not here. I don't particularly, as a 24-year 
um, resident of the neighborhood and member of the Soulard Restoration Group necessarily always agree with that leadership board, nor do I necessarily agree with coding and zoning and some of the things that they've done. Um, I myself have built a garage behind my property that is three um, facades brick, and it is based on a model example of um, the garage that is behind the cat's meow, exactly, believe it or not, in the neighborhood. And um, this particular garage um, design and it, its finish, um, I do not believe, I don't agree with um, the comment that was made earlier. Um, where they said the design is not a negative effect. Um, I do believe that it, the design is a negative effect, and that is because the design is not um, in what I would call the congruity, the continuity, and the integrity of what exists on that alley intersection in that neighborhood. So it's really um, about not necessarily an interpretation of standard, but what you guys are talking about or what I'm talking about is the overall ecosystem and the view of the specific building um, uh, or the, the um, addition that's being built there. So these guys are doing an extraordinary job on this property and I have looked at it from a development perspective and I know that it's costing them a lot of money. But I think that the, when you look at it from a holistic perspective, um, from the idea of um, congruity, continuity, and integrity, it's not there. And I'm going to ask you to think about it from this, and if you want to look at those pictures again. On the northeast corner of the alley intersection, there is an alley house. There is on the, I'm sorry, on the northwest corner. On the northeast corner of that intersection, there is another private residence that was deliberately built on the back of that lot. Directly behind the developer's property is a um, is another alley house, and all of these alley houses have been built, as you can see, with um, brick construction. They have mansard roofs, they have limestone foundations, they have ornate limestone foundations, and um, what we see here in this design does not, in my opinion, fit into the ecosystem of what that intersection is. It is not continuous, it is not congruous, and therefore it doesn't have the same level of integrity. And their project is filled with integrity. Everything that they're doing about it has a lot of integrity, but that garage doesn't meet the mark when it comes to that and that garage port. And it's not the idea of a garage port that is a problem, because I'll cite another <coughs> example in the neighborhood of a garage port that I think is probably doable, or maybe there's a different design for that. But the hardy board construction and the walls the way they are, I don't feel like um, the design elements are there, and it needs to be um, the design elements that needs to be rethought, and it needs to look uh, a little bit more on the scale and um, aesthetic that you would expect behind a building like that were the three other buildings on each of the corners of that alley represent something significantly different than what this is. So um, my recommendation is, is that a conditional approval be given. Uh, rooftop deck can fly, um, but the garage, needs to, garage port needs to be rethought. Now, I've made an interesting connection here based on something that Alderman Coder said, because an example of a garage port that I would cite is the one that's at 2424 South 11th Street, which, as I've come to understand just by listening, is possibly where one of the developers lives. And that is a really interesting garage port, because when you pass by there, you would have no clue unless you took a really hard look at that structure, that that garage port, um, that it was a garage port. Um, it's a masonry finish. Um, it's got embellished with architectural detail, and um, it looks really great. And I think that the proposed design here is um, not of the caliber of what exists at 2424 South 11th, nor is it of the caliber of what needs to be adjacent to that really wonderful structure and the property that they're doing there. Any questions? No, thank you. Joy? Did you bring ice cream? Seriously? You came all the way over here and did not bring ice cream? I just, I said she was going to make the cake, but I don't know what it is. Okay. 
Yes, please. Um, I, I apologize. I probably make a worst case for myself looking like this, but I was working in, and here I am. Uh, t just to, I'm sure I can't say anything, but Steve. Your name for, say your name for the record. Uh, Joy Christensen. And, at and address, please. 2322 South 12th Street, under renovation. I haven't moved in yet. And 1113 Lam I in the picture. Um, that's directly uh, opposite the space that would be the garage structure. You do that we might know about. I'm sorry? What else do you do that we might know about? I uh, have a restaurant, <laughs> the Fountain on Locust, and a home in the Central West End that's uh, on the National Historic Preser you know, grid. And is that, <laughs> is that enough? Perfect. A lot of attention. Lot of attention <laughs> I have a tattoo. <laughs> okay. Um, I am here because I'm sure I can't say anything that Steve hasn't already said. And I just wanted to say that the uh, laws allow apparently for um, vinyl and um, hardy board and a lot of other things that you don't typically see in the oldest n historic neighborhood in St. Louis. And if that were the case that we just read the law, then we would not need a board like you. So something has to be looked at today. Those laws were probably written decades ago. Uh, in terms of how it, the project fits into the fabric of the historical neighborhood that it's in. I do know that uh, if we were to allow all things to be vinyl and hardy board, then we would not have a neighborhood that would even interest many developers. It wouldn't be that attractive. Uh, and one thing, you know, one person's aesthetics are different than another's, but I think Steve said it best when he said to uphold the uh, level of integrity of um, the, the building that is being done here. And, and let me, don't get me wrong, we love these developers and we are thrilled that they are doing what they're doing. And the garage uh, is just that it's so visible. I don't think we can take that law that could apply to anything anywhere that's buried in this high visibility. In fact, maybe it should be some kind of addendum or something should be added to it to be under consideration when there's such high visibility that changes the landscape of what is typically seen in Soulard. I hope I covered everything. I don't have any notes. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman, you want to close? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> um, so we've heard from some neighbors. I would uh, remind you again that this project uh, has the full support of, of both myself and the Soulard Restoration Group and its plan review team, which is comprised of longtime residents, architects, developers, folks who take great interest in the neighborhood. Um, again, we have dozens of carports, vinyl-sided garages and things. I think this will look much better than most of those. Uh, and given the, 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 the financial hardship being faced by creating a full-blown garage or bricks, brick facade on this carport, I would hope that you, this board will um, overturn the recommendation of the uh, Cultural Resources Office and, and allow this project to proceed as planned. Um, with that, I'm, uh, I have nothing else. Thank you. Question. Yes. Um, Alderman, um, how, how does the SRG uh, handle a letter like that? Was there a vote taken? Was there a formal meeting? Yes. Where did that letter come from? And what so was the outcome of the vote? The, um, let me, if I remember correctly, so the Ron and Hank have met with the plan review team s on several occasions. Um, I think most recently on the past, past Thursday, Tuesday? That was Tuesday. Okay, time flies. Um, where we went over, so, and Jan was at, at present at that meeting, and uh, it was unanimous. I think there were five members present, but the plans are also emailed around. There's probably 12 people on that committee, um, and there were no objections to uh, to this proposal. And then that recommendation is taken to the full Soulard Restoration Group board, where it's voted on prior to um, the letter of recommendation from the president. So of the full neighborhood meeting, is that what you mean? No, the, the, the board of oh, the, the neighborhood. The, the we don't board. take all of these proposals to, to the full neighborhood, and that would become somewhat unwieldy. Um, that's designated to the plan review team, uh, and then their recommendation is given to the board of directors of the neighborhood who 
gives final approval. And what was the vote there? I don't know the vote there. I don't know what the, I haven't seen the minutes. I wasn't at that meeting, but I mean, they voted in favor of it and wrote a letter of support. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I don't even know that the mean minutes are out yet, but I could get you that information later. Uh, no, that's okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Commissioners, this concludes our testimony. Unless there is strong feeling otherwise, I'm gonna split the question and ask for a motion on the roof deck first. Alderman Kennedy, do you have a motion? Uh, I move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the proposed new construction of the roof deck. Is there a second? Second. Is there discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Commissioner Colleen, do you have a motion on the garage port? I do not. Mr. Richardson? Yes, I uh, move that the Preservation Board uh, overturn the staff's denial and allow the uh, construction of the garage port. Is there discussion? Commissioner Richardson? Um, I, I think uh, the standards clearly allow for the Hardy Board. And, um, you know, again, I was just pulling up. Um, the Lafayette Square one just for comparison and you know Lafayette Square uh, there's you know if they want a brick they they specifically say it they say if a garage sides on a public street it shall be brick otherwise it can be hardy board this one again is pretty clear it's hardy board it's uh, vinyl it's finished aluminum so it's allowed it's just really the only issue is the carport part of it which I think I already expressed my cons uh, my opinion on the uh, nonsensical drafting um, that if they really didn't want a carport they should have said no carports so I think um, it's actually, my interpretation is it's pretty much allowed here um, as of right. Alderman Kennedy, anything? Okay. Commissioner Colleen, you have a pensive look about you. It's been a long day, Mr. Chairman. No, I don't have any comments. Thank you. There's a motion on the floor that's been made and seconded. The motion is to overturn the board's denial and to approve the garage port as redrawn. All those in favor of the motion Just signify. The, the staff's denial. Staff's <laughs> denial. Staff's denial. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. We're going to do one more agenda item, and then we're going to take a short break. But first, the agenda item 2220 to 2222 Menard. Good. From where? of what was once the STARS office um, that perished under uh, serious circumstances. Um, the, current, the owners wish to rebuild on the site. Uh, based on their current business plans, they need a larger building than was there originally. But it will be on the same site, and the small house that you see there will be retained. This is the site. Uh, it's in the Sular Historic District. Sorry, I should have said that earlier. And this is the proposed site plan. So you can see the small building on the north and then the proposed new building on the south. It conforms with the existing setbacks of the block. And this is the proposed site of uh, front elevation, uh, which will face Shenandoah. A model example has been submitted, as we have seen on other um, infills in Soulard. It is based on a model example, and I have a photograph of it um, in a few minutes. But um, I would like to say that the staff initially was concerned about the scale of the building. Um, revisions have been made to set back the third floor. That's the area that you see indicated as metal siding. And that has significantly reduced the staff's concerns about the compatibility of this building based on its larger size. This is the Menard 
or west elevation, and the original gate will be reinstalled. On the left is the east elevation, which is up against a one and a half story building, um, and the brick will return a substantial distance on that side. On the north elevation, it will be entirely brick. And two streetscapes showing the building in context. So you see that um, while it is somewhat larger in scale than a lot of the buildings, it is not um, significantly so, particularly with the changes to the um, third story. And I should have mentioned, if you look at the, the east elevation here, you can see that it is set back considerably. It's not just a change in materials, but it's a change in plane as well. Okay. This is the model example, which is part of Wireworks in Lafayette Square. And the Soulard standards allow using examples that might have existed in the historic district as well as actually existing in the district. <coughs> and this is the site. And just basically the context. This is as if it's looking both sides. So on the left is the west side of the building, and on the right is the east side along Shenandoah. Again, we're proceeding up Menard. On the right, we're looking south. Again, the, the property is on the right. I'm sorry, the left. Thank you. And again, north. So you can see that there's a variety of scale, two and a half, one or two, three stories. And again, now we're on Shenandoah. This is a little less strong here. So based on the provisions that we've received, which are reflected in your agenda and in the PowerPoint, the staff is recommending that the board grant preliminary approval. I have um, a letter of support from Alderman Coder, and I also have a letter of support from the Soulard Restoration Group which has four conditions. Um, the first three have been reflected in the revised plans, uh, lowering the stone foundation from its original height, um, setting back the third floor. Uh, but the uh, additional condition is to work with cultural resources to create vertical lines on the street facades with two tones of brick. And that one is still, I believe, under discussion. Any questions? Questions for staff? Um, yes, Jan. Um, in some of the other districts, they have a rule that or we've talked about this, where you need you can't go just go shopping for historic model examples. You need to try to match the scale and, and the feel of the immediate blocks around you, or that block in particular. Does Soulard not have that? It has a model example based on that you base on it, and that it allows some deviation that, that Lafayette Square does not. Okay. This is larger in scale. It's a little larger in scale than the model example. And certainly larger than a lot of the context, but it has been visually reduced by the setback, and the staff is satisfied that it will fit in reasonably well with it. The problem is that the that the building owners need a substantial amount of square footage in order to keep their businesses in Soulard, and I think that it is unanimous <coughs> that everyone wants them to stay in the district. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Jan, but Jan, the code does say a design proposed for constructing a new building will result in a building compatible with its architectural environment. So in your opinion, this is compatible with its yes. architectural environment? Thank you. Commissioners, do you have questions for the applicant? Nope. The alderman is also present. Would you like to hear from him again? <laughs> And and yet the alderman would like to speak to us, which he may. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, this didn't come up, but this lot is vacant. Many of you may know this, maybe maybe not, um, because Star Design Group's 
world headquarters was there. They manufacture um, apparel for, for large corporations, and they help them brand it. And their, their building blew up a couple of years ago. Uh, due to no fault of their own, an AT&T subcontractor punched a gas line while installing some cable, and it led to a catastrophic explosion that destroyed the building. Luckily, no one was hurt. Uh, we're very grateful that Star's Design has uh, chosen to remain in the neighborhood, and they've worked closely with uh, the cultural resources and the plan review team uh, on these designs. Uh, you know, we're trying to accommodate not only, the, obviously, the historic look of the neighborhood, but their needs as a growing business um, that we'd, we'd love to keep in the neighborhood. That's why you're seeing a bigger structure than that than was there before. Uh, hope you will uh, uphold Cultural Resource Office's recommendation and grant preliminary approval. Thank you. Was that a minute? How'd I do? You were close enough. Okay. Sir. Am I allowed to speak? No. <laughs> no. And, and, and le unless you want to risk an approval. No, I just want to make one moment of clarity about the size of the building. I'd love to hear that. Okay, please come back. I'll be voting no now. I know, you always do. Uh, <laughs> I just want to, about the scale of the building. I, I'm sorry, we need your Bill name. Durham, uh, 1856 Menard. Okay. Uh, one of the, the existing building that, that burned down was within 500 square feet of what we're proposing now. And uh, it was a three-story building along Menard Street, and it was a two-story with a large mansard along Shenandoah. So I think massing-wise and square footage-wise, we're pretty close uh, to exactly what was there. And within 500 square foot, gross square footage, uh, we may be slightly taller only because we have a lot more systems put in the building than before, but it really is roughly the same scale of building. Now, I, I didn't know I'd get a chance to ask you yes. this. What, what about that condition that the restoration group has asked for, the little, the little vertical stripey things? I don't know. Do you want, you want us to wait on an approval till you do? I'm waiting uh, for Jan to come up with some genius interpretation of what it was they were asking for. Jan? Will you keep an ear open to that discussion? Oh, no, we're going to go back and forth as, as, you know, okay. as we go through the CDs. And I'm sure Jan will have many opportunities to mess with us. <laughs> OK. Commissioner Colleen, have you got a motion? Yes, sir. Commissioner Richardson, have you got a motion? Uh, that the Preservation Board grant, I move that the Preservation Board grant preliminary approval for the proposed new construction with the stipulation that final plans, design details, and exterior materials be approved by the CRO. Is there a second? Second. Motion on the floor. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, commissioners, we're going to take a short break now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Krasnov, what's going on? <laughs> well, on your agenda packets, uh -huh. um, there is an appeal of staff denial for new construction senior apartments of 4600 South Broadway. Um, I think we're going to try to work around our um, ability to have an on-the-record meeting with a quorum um, by trying to uh, do this project in a couple of meetings, but do this as a preliminary review. Um, so what, what this project entails... Why don't, why don't well, we start that? Oh, do we need to amend tell, tell me what other changes we made to the agenda. The only other... Um, Were we here agenda item F today? I assume not. Yeah. We will not hear agenda item F today. Were we here agenda item G today? We will not hear G. Were we here agenda item H today? Not hear H. Were we here agenda item I today? We will not hear I. Are the representatives of J, K, and L here? <laughs> Any J, K, and Ls here? I don't have the agenda in front of you. Right here, right here. Oh, you got that. These are nominations to the, the Register of Historic Places. Yeah. Okay. Oh, H and I, we've already set that up. Yeah. Commissioners. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to do with agenda items J, K, and L? 
Yeah, I'd like us to go ahead and make the recommendation so that they can make the August meeting. Of, okay, proceed. Right. So I move that the that we direct staff to prepare a report for this uh, SHPO that the property uh, on J meets the National Register criteria A for commerce, for K that it meets the National Register criteria C for architecture, and L that it meets the criterion A for education and ethnic heritage, and B for education and social history. Second. Is there discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Commissioners, I believe that agenda item E now moves to the preliminary review agenda, and Mr. Krasnoff will state what we're going to be considering. Um, is, is, it your, is it your opinion that we have satisfied Sunshine? Um, I believe the agenda has been amended, and um, those items were moved uh, so that they can be heard before a quorum on July 24th. And um, this is item E actually is moving in part to the preliminary review, and I believe part, I believe the director is saying that part of item E will be back on July 24th. Okay. Correct. Commissioner satisfied? Yes. Okay. Proceed, sir. All right, um, so this is uh, now a preliminary review <laughs> for the consideration of the demolition of the two buildings you see here. Um, the building on the left side is a, a church built in the immediate sort of post-World War II period. Um, it includes a primary church building, which you see primarily here, or here, and then it's got some classrooms, social hall, that kind of setup back here. And then additionally, it's got a house associated with it. Oops. The house associated with it that you see on the screen here. So this is a project. Um, this is a proposal to demolish the buildings I just showed you and construct um, a senior apartment building in its place. The applicants have applied for and received low-income housing tax credits um, for this project. And this is a site plan for their proposed subsequent construction. Um, in terms of the demolition ordinance, this is in um, the Bluffs Landmark District area. Um, uh, and in the staff's opinion, the buildings are ineligible for the National Register as single site, a single site nomination. Um, this is a local landmark district. Um, and the great thing about the local landmark districts, and I'm saying that tongue in cheek, is that uh, there are n standard design standards have never been developed for them. Neither have demolition standards. Looking back at the history of the landmark district, there is documentation that the folks who designated this a landmark district, did not feel like there were many examples of architecture up and down South Broadway that were worthy of land being landmarked, but that the bluffs as a natural formation were worthy of landmarking. So there were some scattered buildings and the bluffs that they were really thinking of. They were probably nothing of this building. Now it's fair to say that they were doing that in the early 1970s when this building was not even eligible by age for the National Register, which it would be now. But in the staff's opinion, um, this is not a qualifying building for the register as a single site, and you really couldn't make a district of this area of buildings. Um, what I'd like to do is show some context now. Well, I'll show this aerial, first of all. So here's our church building. Here's our church building. There's the, the little house. Um, this is Broadway. This is Ohio Street. It's like a stub of a street, and then you have these townhouses there that were built, I would say, in the 70s, I'm guessing from the design of the buildings. Um, so this area is at the very northern edge of the Bluffs Landmark District, which you see in kind of that gray-blue color there. Come back to this. So in terms of context for the demolition concept here, um, you can see South Broadway has a fair amount of intact fabric as you go south uh, on the uh, west side of the street over here. And this is directly across the street from the site of the proposed demolition. 
Here we're looking at the site of the building to be demolished. And then you can see the, um, there's a lot of trees that shroud those, um, those townhouses built in the 1970s. Here's a closer look at those townhouses as they face Ohio Street. And again, these were out of the landmark district. So because the buildings are not considered qualifying for the National Register, uh, I believe that the uh, Preliminary Preservation Review District Ordinance and the Landmark Ordinance really don't prohibit uh, their demolition. I do want to talk about the proposed subsequent construction because that is a criteria of the demolition. Um, the design of the building that you will see next month is this one here. Well, actually, let me do this. Let me show the site plan first. So you can see it, this is Broadway again. It's got two wings to it, um, uh, one that's parallel to Broadway, one that's perpendicular to Broadway. Um, the applicant has worked uh, very constructively with the staff on the design of the building. Uh, I would remind the board that in terms of proposed subsequent construction, it is, um, it's a low income housing tax credit project, so those are always challenging in terms of design and cost issues. But this is almost an entirely a brick building. There is some vertical plank siding just at these discrete locations to kind of break up the facade. Otherwise, it's a buff brick and red brick building. I'd like to show the building. This was the original design that the developer came in with on the project with a lot more um, hardy board on it than the design now, but they've agreed to add the brick at the staff's recommendation. So um, I would ask for support for a preliminary review on the demolition here. And um, ideally, we'll have a quorum uh, next month, and the developer can come back and talk about the design of the project. And we can get more into that. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have. What made you divide the project now? Uh, um, the, the, the sequence of the timing of the financing and the tax credits that the developer is working under, uh, they feel like they're under a significant amount of pressure for that. And this would allow them time to get in a demolition permit, start moving forward with the demolition, and then they can come back for their building permit when we have a quorum. Okay. Commissioners, questions? <laughs> Do they own, does it, this says the owner is the church still, so they're not going to demolish when they don't own it, are they? I didn't hear the question. I, I'd, I'd rather defer to the owner on a question of who, or the developer as to who owns the property currently and what Good that afternoon. Is. I'm Jim Bender. I represent RR Jennings Developers. And what is your address? I'm sorry? Your address? Uh, 1530 South 2nd Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63104. We have some questions. Commissioner Richardson. So who's the owner now? Of the building, of the existing church. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, Church of Christ. So what's the, when are you going to close on it? We expect to close the middle of July on the building. So doing the, giving you a demo permit now would speed it up? It would allow us that at post-closing, we could begin demolition. This building has an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of asbestos, the church does. There's asbestos in the outbuilding also, but again, frame building, it doesn't take long for that. The church has, uh, in combination, three weeks of just abatement before we can even start demolition, which would take another three weeks. So we've got six weeks of preliminary work here before we can actually start physical ground up construction. Allowing us to begin that demolition in concert with the closing uh, will definitely give us a, some advantage in getting our, getting our work underway here. We're under somewhat of a time constraint. Again, meeting with the MHDC requirements for funding, you have one year to be built in uh, <laughs> occupancy. So you have the, the MHDC tax credit approval already? We have, the, we have their approval. We're going to be closing with them later in, the, uh, later in the month. Are these people on here, people that you brought with you? Yes, I brought the architect and then our, uh, a representative of our partnership. This is, a, this is an LP, uh, 
two parties. The architect was prepared to talk about the physical and architectural cap uh, abilities of the building. Which we'd hear about next month, right? Is the partnership, is it Stacy Hasty and Jeffrey Smith? Is that? That is correct. What do you want to do? We have the architect, and who else is out there? I have brought the architect with me. Just the architect, that's it. But we're going to hear that next time. Yeah. We're, not, we're just doing demo, that. right? The is question you want us to do is demo. And I guess, can I have staff again? Thank you. So, again, my recollection of this ordinance is it's very sparse. It's correct. The landmark district yeah. ordinance, yes. And, and that, again, it's clear that the purpose was to preserve the bluffs, not buildings, right? There's a letter in the landmark file to that effect. Uh, there are, I think there were some buildings that the people who created the district thought were worthy of preserving, but not many, and they say that expressly in the, in the language, in the, in the paperwork that surrounds this nomination. And so demoing this actually is in furtherance of putting the bluffs back to the way they were, correct? I don't know how to answer that question. Okay. I got an idea. There a motion. I move that we grant uh, Preliminary review, right? It preliminary is. approval for the demo of the church building and house as it furtherance of the intention purpose of the landmark district. I'll second for discussion. I, I will note for discussion that should you all tie 1-1, one, one, the motion will fail for lack of a majority. I was unaware of the ownership group and cannot vote on this matter. Okay, well, what, uh, my concern is that uh, we are allowing for a demolition without, um, usually we, we like to see considered plans before we allow a building to come down. Now, this building doesn't seem to have that much historical merit. No one's here to defend it. The, the guidelines from that district don't really talk much about saving. Do, do I remember the architectural element at stake here is the bluff, right. not the subsequent construction? Right. Yeah. We, yeah. I think we so, we had this. If you remember, um, uh, McBride was doing some homes there before. There's the yeah, the, the bluff. Con, yeah, and uh, and so we looked at that before. Um, of what the intent of that ordinance was, which was the physical. Right. I remember yeah. commenting at the time they need, they could, if they want to save buildings there, they need to give us something to go on. Or, or if they want particular design for new buildings, they need to do something. They haven't. So. There's a motion on the floor. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. You could also have abstained if you wanted. It would have passed with one vote. Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. Oh, I'm, thank you very much. Commissioners, I see nothing else on this agenda. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the minutes? We're going to have to do it next time. Their table. I hear a motion. Is there a second? I hear a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We stand adjourned.